but are you more susceptible? Because we hear, and again, these are based on true story incidents where people get possessed by the jinn, these, uh, can you say evil spirits? Yeah, the, de the, the evil among the jinn. Yeah, evil uh, and then they get possessed. So what can a person do? And is a person more susceptible if he's not doing the will of God, of the Creator, obeying Him and His commands, worshiping Him alone, yeah. and, and doing all these things? Do you set yourself up where now you be, make Him stronger? Sometimes they harm humans, sometimes they possess them even. Uh, and basically, uh, I would like to say that this is a very rare case. And it's not something uh, even easy on them because it's against the nature of their life. Rare, and it's not supposed to happen. And it's basically getting out of your way to do it. So it's not something the pleasant for them. I, I have seen a lot of cases in, in my life uh, people come to me and said, hey, my son is possessed, my daughter, or I am myself possessed. And I can tell you 90% of the cases are not true, not true. But there is cases which is absolutely true, where there is a possession, where his houses are basically uh, full of jinn, and they want these houses for them, and they don't want anyone to share this house Have you them. ever walked in a house like this? Have you uh, ever yes. been in a situation? Yes. I, I, can, can you share? I've been Someone. once in a, in a situation like this where basically a lot of weird things happened in this. I was at that time in, in high school, actually. Uh, and uh, we went to uh, one of the houses, very old house, and we rented this place. And basically a lot of weird things start happening. Doors opening, closing, lights goes on and off by itself. It's not an electricity problem. It's not normal at all. It's completely normal. And one of our friends starts acting very weird and basically sleeping all the time and starts saying and doing things very weird. For example, which is impossible to be, he's not capable of it. He will be sitting in the room with someone and he will tell there is someone now in the street, so-and-so person coming up and he's going to knock on the door. And he will start y using very weird languages, words, that this person, we know him for years, uh, he's not familiar with this languages at all. When we start reading on him and, and stuff like that, we, we found the reaction was very severe, very severe. Three weird voices coming out of him and screaming and, and hitting and stuff like that. Finally, we were able to let that evil spirit on him to talk. He basically said, this is our house and we live here and you guys have to leave this place. So I, I told him, I, I, that's not right. I rented this place from the guy upstairs who owned this apartment and I have a contract, you know? Right. You can't, this is not right. If you have a problem, take it upstairs. But you, most people would like, have fled and said, hey, no, I'm out of here, you were like, having a dialogue with Absolutely, and I think that's the best why, actually, if you've ever been in a position like this. Yeah. So I said, if you have a problem, take it upstairs with the guy. And uh, alhamdulillah, we were able to uh, Saddle on a way that he, he said he would leave his body, but he said you guys leave immediately. Anyway, it was one experience, one of the early experiences I have seen. One of the things, I remember a, a group of uh, uh, psychiatrics, uh, yes. we had a debate in Bahrain uh, with a group of psychiatrics about the issue of possession. They denied. And the reason they denied, because they denied the existence of jinn. Yes. So I said, first of all, we cannot talk about possession. Uh, if it's possible or not, if you don't believe in their existence. And if you don't believe in their existence, you don't believe in what's in the Quran. Al Quran stated clearly there is jinn. And in so many verses, as for the possession itself, the person possessed with jinn, I said, you cannot deny the reality, what you see with your own eyes. Forget about debate over text. I'll give you one thing I did whenever a, a case like uh, I had. I will say, because sometimes they trick you, even the, the person himself, he can act like he's possessed because of psychological problem. Mm -hmm. And I have seen cases like this. But one of the things I see, if you really a jinn, I said, I will put an object the other side of the room, like the corner of the room. I will say, knock it down. Like a bottle, yes. tissue box. And if you knock it down, I know that this is not human. Yes. So I know that I'm dealing here with the, with the jinn. And this has happened several times. So I remember even one time we did this in the prison of a psychiatrist himself. Uh, anyway, so 
when you have cases like this, all what you do is you read the Quran on the person and you have a dialogue. Sometimes you can win intellectually with the person. That's why I'm saying the Quran have very strong power over them. They, they, they scream, they cannot take it because they felt the power of the Quran over them. It's so, so different than humans. That's why I'm telling you, humans are worse than uh, jinn. You read the whole entire Quran over someone, you were like, okay, so whatever. <laughs> but the jinn, you just read, start reading, Allah, la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. They were so screaming, cannot take it. And I remember one of the jinn said, I don't believe in God. I said, you sure about that? He said, yes, I don't believe in it. I said, okay. Then I said, Allah, la ilaha illahu. He screams. Then I will say some poetry in Arabic. Yeah. And he will be listening. What's burn you, what's really affect you is the verses of the Quran. Alhamdulillah, and finally he admitted, he admitted that there is a God, there is Allah. And so many times even they accept Islam, Alhamdulillah, and they will even leave the body of the person. What I want to say, there is a lot of people also imagine things like this. And I have a lot of stories also, people claim that they have jinn or possessed, and there is nothing wrong with it. Psychologically, they are basically affected. You said uh, these are rare cases that a person will get possessed by the jinn. But in cases that people do, and let's say they want to get some therapy, all right? Now, you'll hear weird things. People out there who uh, tell them to do, you know, uh, I've, I've heard this myself, you know, go get a chicken, and then they write some weird stuff. All these weird and bizarre uh, things. Is this, and does it have anything, I'm sure you have yeah. more experience, does it have anything to do with Islam? And what's the proper way to do the proper, proper healing of getting this jinn out? Uh, okay, first of all, the best way to do that is to read Quran, is to call the Adhan, like in the house, for example, there is presence of jinn in it. You read the Quran in it, the Prophet said, if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, the jinn will not enter this house. When you enter your house, you say, Bismillah, you call the Adhan in this house, you start praying in this house, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will take this away. If somebody possessed, you read the Quran in him, and you can read on your own self. And you know one person, he read on his own self until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him. The second, uh, basically also you can read in a water and you consume this water. And if somebody possessed with jinn, the moment I give him the water, which is read Quran in it, and I blow on it, he will throw up. He would never, if he consume it, he will go have diarrhea, go to the bathroom, start sweating. It will never settle in his body. But the more he do that, the more he protect himself from inside. Uh, as for the jinn, they don't like certain colors sometimes. They don't like certain uh, smells sometimes. So some people, by experience, they know these. So they let that person see these colors, see these animals, and that's bothered the jinn and let them leave the place. And sometimes it can be affected. But anything involved, sacrificing, that's not allowed. And this is basically the jinn use this trick to make you commit the major the major sin that ever a human can commit, which is basically uh, to offer any form of worship to other than God, and basically to humiliate the humans and to let them go to that low level of being worshiper of the devil or the demons. One more thing I, I want to say here, sometimes with the jinn possessed humans, they can make a physical damage. So treatment, can be very effective. Like in certain cases, you might somebody, the psychiatrist will uh, prescribe certain medication for the person. And I believe it works very fine for them because those things, when they possess human, they may cause imba chemical imbalance in brain and the medicine will balance it out. They might make a physical damage to your hand and therapy and basically operations. And this is, can be fixed through medicine through uh, basically therapy. So the modern science, we, as a Muslim, we don't deny or say they have nothing to do with things like this. Actually, they can be very helpful. Now, you'll see a lot of people who right away they say, oh, I, I, I think I got the jinn in me. When you evaluate their life, you know, they're not submitting themselves completely to the Creator. Say the woman's not wearing hijab, you know, she's uh, partially praying, you know, uh, uh, dressing promiscuous, or the, the boy also going to nightclubs, messing around with the ladies. We know in Islam it's marriage and it's test driving. And then they right away they feel like, man, I got this jinn in me or something. Can this be the effects of the sin now, more so? The jinn will be more happy to make you do all this sin than possessing your body. 
the jinn will be much more happy, happy to have you yet, disobey your creator. disobey creator than just bothering you or harming you. Yeah. You know, because he harmed you already by leading you to the way that lead to the hellfire. The story happened in Dubai, some uh, uh, performance. He used to put like daggers in his body and he used the jinn and this young man came in holding the miswak in his hand and he started reciting Ayatul Kursi. I can see it. He said, I, I can see him from a distance. The moment he, he did that, the jinn ran away and all the daggers went straight to my body and I fall on the stage. I was taken to the hospital. He said, after a couple of months, he said, for two years, I have nothing in life but to harm this person and to hurt him back. I was able to get his name, where he lives, and every jinn that I can put my hand on through my uh, uh, practices of, of magic and dealing with jinn, I used to send them to him. And every time they come back to me, said, we couldn't touch this boy. Wow. We couldn't harm this boy. And he said, the reason is always the same. When I asked them why, they said, this boy never missed salat. You know, the prophet said, Prophet Yahya, John, one has addressed his people, and he told them, the example of us humans with the devil, like the example of somebody, his enemy, trying to capture him. Then he entered into a castle with have very high walls, thick walls, so the enemy were not able to reach him. He said, this castle is the remembrance of Allah. It's the prayer that the, the person do every day to his Lord. And this is the protection that we as human needed to be protected from all these devils and evils out there.